Hi there, boys and girls. Um, this is just a quick informational video, mostly. Um, I mentioned in the last video that I've been playing around with freezing yeast. Um, so I'm going to pop a little video on a second of some stuff I took, just kind of explaining what I'd used, how I did it. Um, um, that's it, really. Uh, just a quick wandering around the kitchen neandering. Um, the information, I did post a link in below, but it was from um, schwaldhelm.net. Um, I'll post that again. Um, um, it seems to be a valid methodology. Everything about it looks well thought out. Um, and this was, I found this link following on from a fair bit of googling on the subject. Because um, rather than looking at using agar agar and you know, building massive yeast cult cultures and you know setting up a lab in the kitchen, um, this seemed like a far more viable idea for me. Um, again, I haven't tested any of it yet. Um, I've got. A couple of vials I kept aside and didn't freeze, uh, just because, you know, six pounds a pop, it's a bit of a saving. Uh, I actually did get a total of seven vials out, and to be fair, I washed still a crap ton of the yeast left down the drain, because I had so much yeast from that particular brew, because I had, must have been a millimetre worth of crap, and then an inch worth of yeast. Um, again, mostly taken from the middle, um, reading up is, is, is kind of the best bit to get. Um, so, yeah, that's what I did. Um, yeah, but basically I kept seven vials in total, one of which was the vial that the yeast originally came in, because, you know, it's a vial, as we use it, and that's actually going off to a friend of mine. Um, two of the other vials are going into the fridge for just general usage, and I'm probably going to do another brew day in a couple of weeks, uh, once this one's finished and I've got space in the demijohns, um, which will be the same recipe, um, but switching to Vienna malt, um, because again, I, the way I want to approach learning how to do this is to stick with a simple recipe. So I'm starting with a smash beer. Um, I did mention before it was by a recipe of the name of Mo Fuggles, which I've tweaked a little bit, but basically it's the same. Um, and I'm changing little things as I go along rather than um, trying a different recipe every time. Um, the reason I've gone for the Vienna malt is because it is a it should have a slightly more sweet malty taste to it, um, and you can unlike Munich you can use it as 100% base malt. So I'm basically dropping the um, pale out for um, Vienna. See how that goes. Um, I'm hoping I'll add a certain taste to the beer, um, but I'm still wanting to find out how the first batch comes out. Which again, um, because I have to work with three demijohns to for my fermenters, um, it's split three ways, and that again is tweaked. So I've got one with Chipotle chili in it, um, one with some progress in for dry hopping, and the third one is kept as... Um, I've forgotten the word now. Ha ha ha. Control. Um, and I will be following much the same with the next batch. Um, Depending on how it comes out with the other two, I may treat the other two differently. I, I won't know until I get there. Anyway, enough rambling. Have a video. Yay! So, the subject of yeast harvesting. Um, this is essentially what I started with. This is what was left over from the um, various... Lots of words. Come on, brain. Um from the oil, uh, just when I'd uh, shifted it into the fermenters. Um, it's a bit hard to tell from this because it's not focusing particularly well. Uh, so I thought I'd focus on the one top. No. Nope. Um, but most of that is yeast. I've got a tiny little bit of crap at the bottom, um, but the vast bulk of it actually settled out to be yeast. I was a little surprised by this because the bag I got for doing the brew in the bag, um, the holes in the bottom were half as fine as the holes at the side, so I was expecting all the flour to clump up, but actually it came out quite clean. It's had about uh, two litres of boiled cooled water added to it, um, mostly because it was quite thick and it, it's going to get decanted out of this into two of these. Um, basically the two litres of water added in there, um, shaken up really good, poured into the jugs, left to settle um, to the same degree as that again. Um, purely because in this case it got such a little crap in it, it was made more sense rather than trying to get it out of the liquid after 10 minutes to let it all settle. I got it out of that with this. A uh, little syringe, which actually is for cat medicine. Uh, we've got a couple of these lying around, they were the perfect size, and with this I was able to go halfway into the bed of the yeast here. So I literally grabbed the yeast from the middle, pulled it all out, um, this holds about 10 millilitres. I was going for about 15, 20 ish uh, in here. 
So these two are probably two of the smaller ones. Uh, these are the ones I'm keeping in the fridge. Um, but basically I um, did a few pulls of that, let it settle, took the um, liquid content out again and then re-added until I got the level I wanted. Um, because I was using this nice metered syringe getting the same amount each time from the same place, it wasn't too hard to get similar results for each pour. Um, once it was done, I removed, um, well if it nearly topped it on water I topped it up, if it needs some removing I removed it. Uh, I also refilled the tube, which is going to a friend of mine. Um, then I added about 25% glycerin, so I got 45 milliliters in here, and these are actually centrifuge tubes. Um, I bought these on eBay. It was probably about a fiver for ten. Uh, they cost peanuts. I'm probably going to grab a couple more bunches because they're right about the right size. What I want to do. But the other nice part is they've got graduated measurements on the side, so I can see how much is in there. So when I come to work out how much glycerin to add, it's a lot easier. Which in this case was about 11 milliliters. Um, so in there again with a syringe, pulled out 11 milliliters, um, popped it in there, gave it a bloody good shake. Well, not these ones, obviously, but these ones. These ones have been in the freezer now for about a week, and they're all frozen solid. Um, and again, this is following the instructions I found online for this method of doing it. Um, and in addition to that, there is a very small um, cooler pack in there. Um, if you haven't seen these ones, they're actually from Wilco's, and they're um, actually really, really cheap. They do full size ones and half size ones, and they're a couple of quid for a pack of three of either, uh, and they work rather well. But yeah, they're in a plastic bag with that in there. The main reason being that if you have a uh, frost free freezer, it will go through a um, defrost cycle. It's not like a full defrost, but to stop it freezing, it goes through a defrost free cycle, and uh, most people report this can kill the yeast. So in this instance, I've added a little cool book, uh, bag in there. So if it does do that, it should account for that, keep it cold while that's going on. And that's basically it. Um, this is yet to be tested, but methodology seems sound and a lot of information on it purports that it should work as planned. So hopefully um, these will be good for a long time to come. These will be good for a short time to come. Um, but I've got these if these don't work. This is about to go down the sink because I just haven't got around to doing it yet. I'm done with it. Okay, 